Audi, Immortalium here, and today I am reviewing Pluto. Now, before I start uh, giving my opinions on Pluto, I want to point out a couple of things. And the first thing I want to point out is the credits. Um, the main credit goes to Naoki Uosawa and Osamu Tezuka, uh, but it is also co-authored with Takashi Nagasaki. It is supervised by Makoto Tezuka, and it has the cooperation of Tezuka Productions. Uh, now, why are so many people involved with this manga? Uh, the reason for that is it is actually a remake. Um, a remake of the Astro Boy story, The Greatest Robot on Earth. Now, um, The Greatest Robot on Earth I have not actually read. It is in the third volume of the Dark Horse release of Astro Boy. I only have the first two volumes, so I'm unfamiliar with that uh, storyline. I do have the first episode of the uh, storyline. Um, in the English language uh, release of the 1980s anime on a Best of Astro Boy DVD. Um, now, I don't really remember much from it. I saw it a couple of years ago and I remember that actually being one of the few good episodes on that release. Um, so, anyway, so if I'm, I'm not really that familiar with the original storyline, so don't go into this looking for a comparison between this and the original storyline. Um, it, you know, I, I'm just going to review it on its own. Um, also, it's important to note that it is a Senen remake. Um, the original was a Shonen, this is a Senen. So, anyway, what is the story about? Um, we are introduced to our lead character, Gesicht, and Gesicht is a robot detective. Um, it is his job to um, investigate these crimes and to solve them, and he's been renowned for being able to solve crimes uh, far faster than any human uh, policeman or detective. Um, now, these murders have begun to happen. Um, a robot called Mont Blanc um, has been murdered. Um, he's a Swiss robot, and he is um, one of the seven strongest robots in the world. Now, at the same time, a um, robot rights activist has also been murdered, and the connecting um, clue, uh, the connecting factor that these murders are related is the fact that each of the victims have these horns sticking out of their head. Um, and that's kind of where the story begins. So what did I think of Pluto? Um, let's break it down onto several levels. So uh, let's start off with the story. So uh, the story genre is very much a kind of mystery thriller kind of um, storyline and is full of um, these great twists, great turns, um, you know, there's some very good characters in there. Um, there's um, also some very nice uh, cameos um, from uh, Astro Boy characters. And also, actually, a lot of these cameos actually turn out to be very major characters. Um, Atom himself, which is the original name of Astro Boy in, in Japan, and uh, Professor Ochano Mizu, is all are um, actually very important characters in this manga. Um, so overall, the storyline is actually really good. However, there are a couple of flaws I want to point out um, which Naoki Uosawa's uh, storytelling. Uh, two major flaws, I might say. And uh, that is... One uh, is that he seems to have a bit of difficulty actually being able to segue away from uh, wherever he is at that point in time. And uh, the greatest kind of crime, like, I don't really want to use that term, but the greatest crime of disuse, I guess I should point out, is in the first volume. Um, in the storyline detailing a robot called North Number Two. Now, uh, the storyline of North Number Two um, it's three-parter, first of all. It's, I found it, um, it, it was an interesting enough storyline, but the problem is we have been introduced to, um, you know, Gesicht and to this case, and uh, throughout the three Nord Number 2 chapters, um, we weren't allowed to really progress at all on that original storyline, which I found annoying. Um, now, would I have enjoyed those chapters a lot more if I'd maybe, like, cut away for, like, a page or two to the main storyline and then cut back. I would have, yeah, because um, while it does fit into the overall scheme of the storyline, um, it was it's only kind of revealed at the end, and even then, a lot of um, the content of uh, the actual chapters themselves aren't necessarily related to the main storyline, more so to the characters themselves of this kind of mini story arc. So, I found that quite annoying. Um, another thing I found a bit annoying is that Naoki Uosawa um, it's not that he's unsubtle in general, but <laughs> there was one um, example that I found really, really blatant, I should put it. And that was, um, there is this group, a kind of robot hate group, 
and um, <laughs> it's it's kind of ridiculous um, because they actually dress up as uh, Ku Klux Klan members. Uh, <laughs> Like the only difference is like there's like RK under cover and besides that it's the white hood like ghosting and even like a couple of pages later like someone actually makes the comparison yeah they're like the Ku Klux Klan and uh, it, I just found that really blatant and uh, about the fact that oh yeah these kind of robot uh, rights groups and the whole robot uh, discrimination thing and all that you know comparison to the blacks in America yeah that's very unsubtle so I found that quite annoying. Um, but besides that, the actual storyline itself is very good. There's lots of action, um, there's lots of twists and turns, and it has a very satisfying ending. Um, except for maybe the last few pages, I needed to look that up, but it actually does make sense what you research into it, but it isn't an ending you will completely understand the first time you read it. Um, so overall, the story, yeah, it's a very good story. It's a lot of things I would have made changes to, um, but it is a very good storyline. Now the characters. Um, let's start off talking about Gesit himself. Now, Gesit, at the beginning, is a bit emotionless and a bit cold, um, and I found him a bit hard to relate to, but over the course of the storyline, um, I actually really began to um, kind of develop a connection with him, um, as he kind of develops these kind of emotions, uh, these connections with the characters involved in this case, etc, etc, as well as some dark revelations about his past. So. Gesicht is actually a very good main character. Now, for the other robots, um, the um, robots that are involved in this uh, case, with the exception of Norton number two, which I'm not saying that I dislike the character, I just dislike the way that he was developed. Um, the other characters, the other robots, are actually very well developed. We um, understand, you know, their opinions. Um, we understand who they are, um, how they feel. And we develop a connection to them, um, which then further leads to sadness. I won't actually um, spoil anything on that. Um, but overall, the character development is very nice. And uh, that even applies to the human characters. Um, a lot of them feel really um, deep, even if we only come across them for a couple of pages. Um, so the characters themselves are also very well handled. Again, with the exception of Norton number two and those... Ku Klux Klan ripoff members, as I call them. So, yeah. So, um, characters-wise, it gets another plus. So, let's move on to an artistic perspective now on this. So, uh, this is the first um, work that I've read from Naoki Uzawa. Um, so, I'm unable to compare his artwork in this to his other works. Um, but uh, from what I've read, the artwork is actually very good. Um, first thing I want to point out is that the uh, characters the from uh, Astro Boy are very loyally handled here. Um, they're very clearly recognizable. Um, you know, they possess all the aspects of them that made them so distinctive in the original Astro Boy, yet they also have this far more realistic look as might be associated with the fact that it is a Senen work. So, um, as a kind of a tribute to the original characters of Astro Boy, it works very well. Um, the backgrounds are highly detailed, as can be expected from a lot of Senen. Um, now, the the actual artwork itself, when it comes to character movement and uh, character designs, etc., etc., is a little bit scratchy, um, which I'm not overly keen on. Um, but it actually works um, quite well in a lot of action scenes themselves. Um, but when characters are standing around, uh, it, there's this kind of scratchiness to them. Um, but overall, the artwork itself is quite appealing. Um, panel work, though, was a bit kind of standard. Um, we come across a lot of the boxes. Um, you know, like uh, pa actual square-shaped panels and rectangular-shaped panels. Um, not, not particularly much um, creativity in the use of the panels. Um, several action scenes do actually use diagonals, um, but there were a lot of scenes that I noticed that um, could have actually flowed a lot better with, you know, the use of diagonals, and it was just kind of decided to keep the squares or the rectangles. So, um, panel. Uh, I'm not really familiar with how Naoki Usawa usually uses panel work, but uh, I found the panel work to be quite standard in this. Not that it's bad, it was still quite fluid, and um, it was still quite engaging, uh, but I was expecting a bit more from his panel work, considering um, all that I've heard about him as a storyteller. So let's just cover quickly um, how Viz released this. Uh, this is the... Um, this is released under the Viz Signature imprint, and uh, what does that amount to? Uh, first of all, we get a, a larger uh, trim size. If I might 
compared to a normal manga size. Here we go. So, it's as you can see, it's quite a lot bigger than a, a standard Tankoban. The beginning of each volume actually uses color pages, um, which I really appreciated. But, um, one thing that I did find quite annoying is that there are several scenes throughout, um, which are very clearly colored in, as can be seen, for example, from here. But they were left monochrome, um, which I do find kind of annoying. I was thinking to myself, well, if you can color in the first, you know, uh, color pages, why not color in the rest of the color pages? Now, this isn't an issue that's only associated with the release of Pluto. I've also noticed that in, um, in Solanen, and uh, Tenjo Tenge, etc, etc. So this seems to be applied to a lot of um, the signature works um, that only the first pages are actually in color and then everything else, even if it was originally in color, is in monochrome. So I did that, find that kind of annoying. Um, the other thing I want to point out as well, um, which actually I don't see too often, except for in really highly deluxe um, releases, is the use of French flaps. Now, there is no actual artwork on the inside, which I find that kind of annoying. I always appreciate that in um, the use of French flaps. But um, the French flaps actually give this um, a really kind of a nice uh, feel. It kind of has a um, kind of previously um, a feel to it at the beginning. And then at the end, it just has a little bit on Usawa and Osamu Tezuka. Um, so this is release of it overall. Um, it's quite nice. Um, nothing spectacular, but um, overall it is a very nice release. So, um, overall, do I recommend you get this? I do. Um, Viz have treated very nicely, it's a very engaging story, etc, um, etc. Et and I do intend to pick up Naoki Uwasawa's Monster next, um, because of the release of the... Is it Perfect Editions, as uh, Viz are calls it, calling it? I don't know, these kind of two-in-ones that Viz will be coming up with uh, soon. So. Um, very promising start to uh, Naoki Uwasawa. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye bye.